Hey everybody, Mr. On Demand, man with Master Plan. And my master plan today is to let you know about some PS2 emulation on Android. Just got a big update, but be careful which version you install. Let's go ahead and take a look at this article right here. So in this article, PS2 emulation on Android got a big update, but you got to be careful which version you install. So the Nether SX2 version uh, 2.0 brings performance and compatibility upgrades provided you download the right version. Let's read what they say here. PS2 emulation on Android has been advancing slowly since the SX2 shuttered its doors. And this is why I also uh, tell you that you're better off actually doing emulation under Windows. It, it provides a, a greater compatibility and uh, reliability and uh, better performance usually than trying to run any kind of emulation for any platform on your cell phone. Uh, that being said, if all you have is your phone and you do want to try to play some PS2 games, this may be a good option for you. Um, this has been actively improving the Nether SX2 fork. The first big update this year dropped earlier today, and if you can navigate the confusing two-pronged release, it offers significant upgrades. So this is part of the issue. Um, version 2.0 of Nether SX2 build 4248 has several significant changes in appearance and performance, starting with the former. It has completely revamped the touch controls uh, and added more buttons across the top for rewind, save stats, macros, and more. So here's the screenshot showing you what it looks like on your phone right here. In terms of performance, the conversion script for GameDB has been updated, which should improve the performance for many games. It now uses the latest settings and fixes from the main PCSX2 emulator, swapping in a few Android-specific overrides for better compatibility. The result should give you the best of both worlds, excellent stability and improved performance. There are a few other minor changes, such as updated widescreen and no interlacing patches, improved Russian translation, and larger covers on the main game list. However, the patch notes list that NASCAR and Colin McRally games have graphical issues, and there may be issues with older Mali devices when using the Vulcan renderer. So, this is something you got to understand uh, with all emulators. Depending on the device you're using the emulator on, will definitely change the capabilities of the emulator and how well the emulator can play the games. So depending on your hardware, the processor, and everything you're running on that emulator, uh, that will greatly change how well you're going to be able to play the game and what kind of, you know, uh, you know, what what kind of, kind of results you're going to get and how fun the game's going to be for you. Um, so basically what you have to do is just try it out and see what happens. That's, uh, that's where the second version of Nether SX2 Classic comes in. The Classic version is based on older and more stable version of SX2 and may offer better support in certain games on certain devices. It's also been updated to version 2.0 with the same list of upgrades. Unfortunately, you cannot have both versions, Nether SX2, installed on the same device. Additionally, save stats are not compatible between standard and classic. So make sure you create hard saves before switching from one to the other. For most modern devices, you better, you're better off starting with the standard release and switching to classic if you're having issues. Check out the patch notes and find downloaded links for Nether SX2 2.0. Uh, on the official GitHub page. Uh, so you'll want to go to uh, look them up on their GitHub page to actually download the uh, the emulator to play to to put it onto your phone and try to get it uh, set up. Um, that's basically it. I just wanted to give you an update because this was a pretty big update for PS2 emulation for Android. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are wanting to do some of the simulation on your Android, even though I recommend getting a actual gaming handheld for doing your game emulation on, uh, whether it's an Android handheld or whether it's a Windows based handheld, I think uh, the Windows based ones are the better option when it comes to the variety of op games you can play on it, but that's to each their own. Just 
do your research, find out if the device you have will play the game you want to play. That's all you got to do at the end of the day. So make sure of that, and that's it. Um, yeah, this was Mr. On Demand, and with Master Plan, just giving you a little news update on some emulation out there. Leave a thumbs up if this was useful. Uh, if it wasn't, uh, let me know down below. Um, I don't usually do full emulator reviews, especially on Android, because I don't run a lot of Android emulators mainly because I can already play everything through Windows with the emulators there, so I have no need to do that. Uh, my Android phone is a phone, and I don't really play games on it. I pick up my nice, bigger screen, more powerful Legion Go for that, or possibly buy something new uh, in the future that's even more powerful than that device. But uh, that being said, teach their own. Everybody have fun. As long as you can play the game and you're having fun with your game, that's all that matters. Um, try not to discriminate. Uh, although I, I do have my own biases of what I think is the best route for people to go. Uh, some people just don't have money to, to buy another device, though, and I understand that, too. Uh, you guys all have a great day. Uh, this was Mr. On Demand, man with the Master Plan. I'll see you again in the next video.